As we've been learning the programming language Python, we have been investigating different kinds of data that Python provides for us. We've been using integers and floating point numbers and lists and dictionaries and strings and files. These are all data that are provided by the programming language. But oftentimes we have problems that we want to solve where we would like to build data that more closely represents the kind of things that are required for the solution to our problem. Because Python is an object-oriented programming language, it provides us with the capability of building our own kinds of data objects. In order to build a data object, we need to first define what is called a class. A class is like a blueprint. It's like a template for what a particular data object will look like. So for example, the object 5 is an instance or an object of the class int. And when we evaluate 5, we've already seen that we get back this object 5. The same thing is true with a string. When we talk about the string hello, that is an instance of the class string. And we know that the object hello has a value. And we also know that it has methods that it can perform. And so, in general, objects are pieces of data that know things about themselves, that have what we call a state, and that can do things. And we call those things methods. If we draw this pictorially, we oftentimes think of our objects as being circles, or these donuts, where the inner circle represents the state or the value or the individual uh, pieces of information that this object knows about itself and the outer ring we often think about as being the methods that that object can perform and so when I have a reference to an object that reference gives me access to those methods and those methods in turn can interact with the state or the internal value of the object to provide functionality or to give me back information and so on. So what we want to investigate here is how can we create objects that represent things other than what Python provides. So for example, let's say that we were going to solve problems that are related to rectangles. Well we know what a basic rectangle is. A rectangle has a height and it has a width. So any given rectangle, in order to understand the specifics of that rectangle, we're going to have to know the specific height and the specific width for the dimension. In terms of a rectangle object then, any rectangle object is going to have to know its own height and width. But once an object knows its specific height and width, then we could have that rectangle do things. For example, we could have the rectangle know how to compute its own area or how to compute its own perimeter. We would call those things the methods that the rectangle provides. So what we would like to do then is think about building an object where a rectangle object has a state which consists of a width and a height. And so for example if we had a rectangle that was 10 units wide by 5 units high perhaps the width would be a reference to the object 10 and the height would be a reference to the object 5. And We might say that that represents then its internal state and maybe one of the methods that this rectangle could do might be to get the area. The idea being that if we have a reference to this object and we ask this object to perform its get area method that the object itself would know that its area is 50 
because it would know that to do that it needs to multiply its own height and its own width. So what we would like to be able to do is create the mechanics required to allow us to define our own kind of class therefore allowing us to create our own kind of objects and then be able to use those objects to solve problems.